let's talk about wrapper classes now we have talked about primitive variables right example if you want to create if you want to store a number like 5 of course you will store that in a int variable or maybe short maybe byte that's your choice uh, if you want to work with a value which is point values let's say 6.5 or something like that you will be using double of float and then if you want to store a character you will use a char right so java does provide you primitive data types and that's what makes java a uh, 99.99% object oriented that's why java is not purely object oriented because if you talk about a language like object oriented programming language it means that everything should be object but that's not the case with java java says okay we are still going to work with something which is not extending object as we know every class in java extends object class but not the primitive values if i talk about int float they are they are primitive types they are not object types right it's good because it helps Java to improve the performance because it directly works with the fixed site value, right? So it is not saved in a heap memory as an object, which will which will be time consuming. So what it says is, if you want to store a value, you can do that directly in primitive. But then there are certain features or there are certain frameworks in Java which only works with objects. Example, let's say uh, in future we are going to talk about collection framework. In collection, if you want to store values, so just to give you a heads up, a collection is basically similar to array. At this point, just remember that. And we can have multiple values. In array, we can have these, uh, the primitive types, but not in collection. You need to have object type. And that's why Java says, well, let me introduce something. So in Java, we got this concept called a wrapper class. Now what's a wrapper class? For every primitive type, we are going to have a class for it. Okay, so if you want to work with int, you can work with integer, which is a class. And this integer class basically extends the object class. You have a char, we have character as a class, we have double, we have a double as a class, and list goes on. Maybe it is short, then we have byte. For every primitive type, we have a class for it. Okay, and it's quite good if you want to work with uh, a framework with only, with, which only supports objects. But yes, if you want to improve the performance and there's no restrictions, primitive still makes sense. And that's why most of the examples we have used primitive type. But again, there are certain requirements where you have to use classes. Now, how do we do that? So let's get back here. Let's say I have an int variable int num is equal to 7. Now, how do I store this value into a class type or the object type? So the class we have is called integer, right? So let me get a variable called num1. So that's my uh, reference object now, a reference variable. This is a primitive variable, this is a reference variable. Now, since this is a class integer, we can say new integer. And in this integer, we can say uh, whatever value you want to store. Let's say I want to store eight. Now you can see there's a line on this. Uh, so whenever you see a line in any ID, any of the IDE, it simply means this particular syntax has been deprecated. Deprecated simply means it was there. I uh, don't use it now because in future release they might remove it or we have a better alternative for that. But yeah, this is one of the syntax we can use. So we, we have new integer and you can pass a value which you want to store. And of course, uh, we will see what is a better way of doing this apart from this deprecated. But at this point, let's continue with that. And let me print num1. And let, let's see if that works in the same way as we were doing. Okay, you can see we got a warning. There's no error, we got a warning. But let's run this code and you can see we got eight. If this is not a good way of assigning a value, what is a good way? What we can actually do is instead of assigning like this, we can directly assign a value called eight here. And this works, you can see there's no, uh, no deprecated warning. And if I compile this code and run, there's no warning as well. Now, how this is happening? First of all, uh, for every type we have an integer, we have a class type, right? Now, what is happening here is, example, let's say, if you want to store this int num variable, which is a primitive type in this, instead of saying eight, let me just do that here. I will pass num. Now, what we are doing is we are taking a primitive value and storing that in an object. Now, this concept is called auto boxing. So this concept is called boxing, not auto boxing. This concept is called boxing because you are taking a primitive value and storing that in a primitive object or in a wrapper object, in a class object. That is, that is called a boxing. Now, since this is so important, what they've done is you can directly assign num now. So this boxing is happening automatically. See, behind the scene, the num is a primitive type, right? This num, this num one is a reference variable. So of course it should be an object. So this will be getting converted to object automatically. And that's why we say that is auto boxing when you convert it automatically, okay? Uh, how do you assign the value to again a primitive value? Let's say we have num2. And I want to assign the value of num1 to num2 now. 
In this case, you can say uh, num1 and then this number is an object type, right? You have to get the value. So you can say get integer and you can pass the value which is num1 or you can pass, you can simply say get integer. Okay, get integer giving you an error. Okay, so not get integer. We have to, we have to use a different, num, different method. So you have to say dot, what's the method name? Yeah, so we got int value. So the method name is int value. So from this object, which is of type integer, you can say integer class, which has a lot of different methods. If you scroll down for different features, you can use different methods here. But then uh, if you want to get the integer value, you can say int value. And then if you try to print num2, Again, it will give you the same value. Compile and run, and you can see we got seven, right? Now the thing is, if you do this, you are saying unboxing because you are getting a value from the object type to a primitive type, right? But what if you don't do it manually? You directly assign num1, will this work? And you can see there's no problem. Now, since this is happening automatically, we call this auto unboxing. So what is auto boxing is when you store a primitive type in the object automatically, and what is auto unboxing is when you take out the value, the primitive value from the object. So this is auto unboxing. And as I mentioned before, we have different classes. Example, we can also use double. Even double is a class. It, so you can see it's a class. And uh, we can use character as well. Just try it out. Now, apart from this auto boxing and boxing, int, integer provides you one more thing. Let's say I have a string uh, data here, which is string... It's, let's say str and the value in this is actually seven or maybe some other value, let's say 12. Now I got this 12 here, which is a number, but it is stored in a string format, okay? And then if I want to print this, if I want to print str, maybe I want to perform some operation on this. Maybe I want to uh, double the value. So can I say str into, uh, into two? This will not work, right? Because str is a string. You can't perform an operation there. So what you can do is you can take this value into integer format. You can say integer, uh, maybe num3. And in this num3, I want to store this 12. How do you get a integer from a string? Now for that, there is a class called integer, which we are using. And this class has a method called pass int. Now pass int is a method which will take the string and it will convert that into integer. And I can simply say str and it will Take the value from the str, convert that into integer and store it in the num3 and you can perform num3 into 2. Okay, so integer is great. This is called a wrapper class because it's a wrapper around a primitive type, but it provides you multiple features. One of them is pass int. Let's see if that works. Compile and run and it worked. Can you see that we got 24 here? So yeah, that's about the wrapper classes. As I mentioned, we have multiple classes available. Try them out. And if you directly assign a primitive value to the object type, it is called auto boxing. And when you want to fetch the value automatically, that is auto unboxing.